We started discussing about uh, convergence of sequence of random variables in the last class. So we defined uh, different notions of convergence. We talked about uh, what convergence in almost sure sense. We talked about convergence in probability. We talked about convergence in mean squared sense, and at the end we defined convergence in distributions. So let us take an example here, let us say I have 3 random variables in this form, let us say it takes some number here and then it has uh, something. So this is all random variable x1 and let us say I have another one, so let me call this values here let let us say this is a1, this is a2 and this is a3 ok and uh, similarly let me just draw another one here it is uh, like this. Let's say. So again, all these things are same. This is a1. This is a2. This is a3. And uh, yeah, my scaling is not correct, but. So let's recall the definition of unit integral probability we have defined earlier. And let's say we have three random variables defined on this unit interval probability space like this. So this is x1, this is x2 and this is x3. So notice that the way I have drawn is here, all this random are going to take only these three possible values a1, a2, a3 and uh, this these bits are same. I mean I my scale may not be correct but uh, assume that. So this whatever this width is let us say this is like p1 whatever this is the same p1 here and this is p2 and let me let us say yeah, this is the p2 width here and let us call this as the third part as p3 ok. So all of them have the same taking three values but it is just like the intervals which on which they are taking these values is going to be different, right. So here it is uh, taking value p2 on this interval and here it is taking the same value p2. Uh, so here it is taking the same value p2 on a different interval here. So what I mean here is, uh, ah, that is fine. Now let us say that x4 is now again this x5 is this, x7 is this, x8 is this, x9 is this and x4 is x9, 10, 11 is this. Like it is now the my, my random variables are periodic versions of this. So okay, so what we mean is xn plus 3 is simply going to be xn for all n. Now, if you have a sequence of random variables like this, do you expect it to converge in almost sure sense or in probability? No, right, because this is periodic and it is fluctuating in so much. But if you look at the distributions, so what is the, how is the, what is the distribution of x1? x1 is actually a discrete valued random variable right here actually it is only taking 3 values a1, a2 and a3 and uh, it is going to take that with probability what p1, p2 and p3 
and it is also again the same is the distribution again same here this x2 is also taking three values a1 a2 and a3 with what probability is again p1 p2 p3 so if you look into this distributions these random variables are identical they are the same it's just like they are putting that mass on a different intervals otherwise they are the same so this is where we want to understand convergence in the distribution so we have to go beyond convergence in almost show sure, convergence of probability and convergence mean square and we want we are interested in convergence in distributions okay fine now what is the limiting distribution here so if we have a sequence distribution what will be the limiting distribution so the limiting distribution is something which is probability that x1 is equals to a1 is p1 probability that x2 is equals to a2 equals to p2 and probably equals to x3 equals to a3 p3 or this is going to be any random variable which takes this values a1 and a2 a3 with probability p1 p2 p3 this is going to my limit distribution here okay fine now let's look at another sequence of random variables i'm going to define a sequence of random variables here what is u here u is uniform random variable i'm going to look at a sequence of scaled uniform random variable here like like this u i'm going to pick scale by minus 1 to the power by to the power n by n now let's try to understand how the distribution of this looks like so let's take n to be odd if n is odd this random variable is going to be positive random variable or negative random variable it's going to be negative value random. and then let's look at how its cdf look like so your value u takes value between what 0 and 1 right it's going to be its smallest value is going to be when u equals to 1 in that case it is going to be minus 1 to the power minus 1 divided by n because n is odd here okay and uh, its largest value is going to be 0 so if you look into its cdf it's going to start from minus 1 by n here and how does it go it goes all the way up to here linearly and hits 1 here right and then it hits 1 here now if you look into the case when n is e1 how does the cdf look like so in this case the smallest value is going to be what it is going to be positive random variable when n is e1 what is going to be the smallest value zero and what is going to be the largest value 1 by n and it is going to be and then it saturates here right it takes one so i have this cdf which is going to look like this for depending on whether n is odd or even and uh, as n tends to infinity what is going to happen to this it is going to be just step function and uh, what is where is the jump happening at origin at x equals to 0 okay now let's understand so we expect that in this case the limiting distribution to be what which is the one which is going to take almost value 0 with probability 1 okay so that is my limiting distribution so my limiting distribution is just this now let's try to like 
understand how my CDF converge at different points of x. So, my CDFs are function of x here, right? Let us see for different values of x how they converge. Suppose if I take a value of x here in the negative side of my real line, that is x is less than 0. Okay. And if I let n go to infinity, what this value will converge to? It is going to converge to 0, right? Because this guy will keep shifting to the right side and some point whatever x you have here, it is going to go beyond that and it is always 0 and this guy is anyway 0 for x less than 0. Now, if you are going to look at f of x n of x for x greater than 0, what is this going to happen? It is going to be 1, right? So, this guy sequence converges to 1. That is fine and that is matching with this. When I am going to take x less than 1, this is going to be 0 and when I am going to take x strictly positive, that is going to matching with 1. Now, let us look at the case when x equals to 0. Okay. So, when x equals to 0, so what is the value of this function at x equals to 0? It is going to be 1, right? Because we have a right continuity property. And what is the value of this at x equals to 0? 0, right? So, I have a sequence which is alternating between 1 and 0. Will such a sequence converge? No, right? So, it is not converging at when you are going to look at x equals to 0. So, it is converging for x less than 0, converging x greater than 0, but for x equals to 0, it is not converging. So, as you see this, this limiting distribution has a jump or a discontinuity at the point x equals to 0, but on all the other points, it is continuous. But now, you see that at the point of discontinuity, this convergence is not happening. So, in general, that is why when we said that in the definition of convergence and distribution, we said that a sequence of random variable convergence in distribution, if the CDFs convergence to the limit CDF at all points of continuity. So, right, that was our uh, definition of convergence in distribution. So, why we ignore that? Because say, like say, if this, if you look at the sequence of this CDF, they are converging at every point except for the point of discontinuity here. But uh, still like we, it is valid that this distribution we can assume, I mean we can interpret that that is converged to this point, but we have to just ignore this point of discontinuity here. So, just like uh, to account for this in our definition of a convergence and distribution which we stated last time, we have explicitly stated that we look for convergence of CDFs only at the point of discontinuity of the limiting distributions. We have already discussed that distributions are somehow associated uniquely with their characteristics function, right? Because character function uniquely defines the distributions and vice versa. So, then based on this, we can directly state the following result, which I am just going to state without proof. So, if we have a sequence of random variables and then another random variable x, then we are going to say all these three statements are equivalent. Either you say that x n convergence in x in distribution, you recall this notation, this is what we mean by convergence in distribution. This is equivalent to say that if you are going to take the expectation of your random variable, but not directly the random variable, expectation of some function of this random variable where this function is continuous and bounded, if this sequence of expectation converges to the expectation of 
the function of that limiting uh, random variable, then this is also implies that they converge in distribution. And alternative characterization of same is you look at the convergence of the characteristic function. So, phi of x n is the convergence uh, characteristic function of my random variable x. So, if you compute at some point u, then it should convergence to the characteristic function of x again computed at the same point u and this should happen for all u. If this happens, then we can again say that my sequence of random variable converges in distribution. Okay, so, I am just going to skip this proof, but uh, we will take this result for granted. Please look into the proof in the, in the book. Fine. So, we have now characterized all the four kind of convergence notions we studied. Okay, now, the question is what is the relation between them? So, I am going to state it as a proposition. So, let x n be this sequence of random variable be a now. Suppose if I know that my sequence x n converges to x in almost sure sense, then this implies that x n converges in probability to the same random variable x. Okay. So, this we have already said and now if x n converges to x in the mean squared sense to some random variable x, then x n converges in p again to the same random variable x. If x n converges to x in probability, then x n converges to x n distribution and d such that for all and and So, what this result says is suppose if you have a sequence of random variable that convergence in mean squared uh, in almost sure sense, then that implies that it converges in probability also. The second point says that if I have a sequence of random variable that converges in mean squared sense, then that also means that it converges in probability. Okay. And the third point says that if I have a sequence of random variables that converges in probability, that means that it also converges in a distribution. Further, now the question is okay, we had 
shown implication in one direction, what about the other directions? Is it true that P implies AS and P implies mean squared sense? So this part D answers that question partly. It says that convergence and P implies convergence in mean squared sense that is this direction provided something happens under some condition not always true. It says that if there exists a random variable y such that all my sequence of random variables are dominated by that random variable y with probability 1 and this random variable is such that further it has finite second moment. If I can find a such a random variable y then this is true that my convergence in probability also implies convergence in mean squared sense. So this, this implication that convergence in P implies convergence in almost sure that is not true in most of the cases. Even if you look at uh, the example we studied, we already have an example what we discussed where it converges in probability but not necessarily in the mean squared sense. So also it is not so easy to come up with conditions like when convergence in P implies convergence in mean squared sense. Sir, yeah. If mod x n less than equal to y, that is, be true for all omega. That is the meaning of that, right? It should be true for all omega. Right? What is the meaning of this? So this means that if yeah, I take set of all this omega where x n of omega the absolute value of that is upper bounded at y of omega that set of omega should have probability 1 right. It may happen that it, this condition is violated on some omegas where that mass is 0. For example, when we have a continuous value right it may happen that one point this condition may not hold but that one point may have 0 mass I do not care about such points. So that we are going to come through P, right? So if I have almost sure, first we'll check whether it implies P, and once I I I know it implies in P, then I have this condition will come to my rescue. So it's not like I I don't have a direct route here. I have to go here, and if after going here further, if this condition holds, then I have a clear. I can then say something about uh, mean squared sense. So this also in general we do not know, I mean uh, we do not have a proper conditions like this when uh, this is going to be true. So all we only whatever we know that we have stated here under this conditions this holds. But if you are going to for some reason want to use that distribution con convention distribution implies convergence pre you need to provide a proof for that. It may happen that for a specific example you have in your hand. Convergence and distribution may be also implying convergence and distribution, but you need to establish that. But if you have a case where you have convergence in mean squared sense, you can just say that okay, using this proposition we said that already implies convergence on P. Okay, the, in, the ones we have in this hard lines, this continuous lines, we, we know. And when you are using this uh, dashed lines, you have to first establish this hypothesis that that exists such a y and for the lines which we do not have you need to provide a proof before if you want to use it at all. Okay. There is one more property important property that we will just write down. It says that suppose xn converges to x in Let us say uh, limit uh, x n converges to x in m s square or almost square or, or in p. And I have limited x n equal y again in 
mean squared sin or cos squared sin or p then it must be the case that probability that x equals to y is equals to 1. So, what it is saying is the limits are unique up to the probability uh, uh, unique up to the set on which we have on the set with probability 1. So, you remember in the first class, in the previous class we had a simple example for a, where we defined x n of omega is equals to omega to the power n right. You recall that example. So, for that example we said that the limiting x is 0 on all omega or we came up with another possibility where x is 0 for all omega strictly less than 1 and x at omega 1 is 1. Right. So, these two were both possible limits according to that definitions, but then they are they have they are equivalent in the sense that they they have they put they, they are uh, uh, the prob the, the they put uh, they take the same values on a uh, on the space which has probability 1. No, we because this is we already said right we are interested in unit probability space unit interval probability space we have restricted our probabilities on our uh, sample space to be unit interval. Okay, so we are, okay. so even in that case then that mod x n then we will have to restrict our sample space according to the problem right. What is that? No, here I have not stated so those are specific examples you can take the sequence of distributions let us say they are all on the some probability space. On this probability space we are defining everything these this extents are all defined on this ok. Fine. So, the last point is suppose let us say I have and x n equals to y in distribution. So, let us say I have I establish that I x n converges to some random variable x in distribution and y x n converges to another random variable in again distribution then it must be the case that x and y has same distribution. Okay, let us try to ex at least prove the first A and B parts, which will also uh, highlight some of the or uh, like uh, help us revisit some of the concepts we bef defined before, for example, continuity of probability and all. So, let us uh, try to prove A. Okay. We have let us assume that x n goes to x almost surely and now we need to show that that implies x n converges in p ok. So, let us define a set a n equals to Okay. I have defined a set an. Now, if I want to show my x n converges in probability, what I need to show? I need to show that probability of this an as n goes to infinity is 1. That is the definition of convergence in probability, right? Okay. Okay, we need to show. Let us try to see if we can do that. Okay. 
So, for that we need to construct some specific sets. So, let us define B and to be all omega x n of omega sorry k x of omega to be less than omega for all k greater than or equals to f. See what I have done is I have I had interested in set a n which for a given n wanted included all these omegas which satisfy this condition. Now I have slightly re refined it and defined a new set where I want this condition to hold not only for n but for all k greater than or equals to n. So this was a particular n. Now I want it to hold not only for n also for n plus 2 and all the way up to infinity. So because of this is B n is a set which is contained in A n or other way around. So A n is contained in which is most stringent where I am asking for more this is B n right. So, B n for not only n I want this to happen for everybody. So, it may happen that some omegas this may not happen they may drop out from this. So, because of that which one is correct this one or other way around other way around this one is correct right fine. Now, let us look into this sequence of B n's now I want to look at So, is this sequence of Bn's they are monotonically increasing or decreasing? So, if I increase n right, let us say I increase uh, n from 10 to 15. Earlier I wanted everything beyond 10 to satisfy, now I only want everything beyond 15 to satisfy. So, it should be increasing function right because as n increases I only want smaller number of sense conditions to be satisfied. So, I will have b1 contained in b2 like this or bn is an increasing sequence. We are saying that this condition should be satisfied for all k greater than equal to n. Right. And an should be satisfied for only n. So, this is like I am looking for all these omegas which satisfy this at only n. Yes. Now, here I am looking for all this omega it not only satisfied at n but also every point after n. So, how are we saying Bn is a subset of n? So, let us say something satisfied n. Is it necessary that it satisfies at n plus 1 also? It may not satisfy at this point, right? So, that point may drop out of this. So, because of that, a point which may be belong to a n that need not necessarily belong to b n. Yeah? Okay, let uh, what you are saying here. B n is going to be for all this. What is the issue here? We want this to be correct. Okay, let us take a point. Let us take, let us say some omega belongs to A n. Can you guarantee me that that also belongs to B n? Okay, just think about it. Okay, let us see. Are you convinced or not Bn is monotonically increasing? I just said, right? Let us take n, n equals to 1. 
Now you want this to be satisfied k greater than equals to 1 right like all the points this should be satisfied. Now let us take k n equals to 10. When you have 10 you want to be satisfied only after 10. So here compared to the first case in the second case you have lesser condition to check right. Yeah. Yeah. I mean that is what like it could be the same. That is what our convention right we have said that unless it is a six, six subset then I would have written like this. Okay, fine. And now whenever I have this, I know that what is my limiting B? My limiting B is going to be union of B of N, right? And uh, what is my convention in that case? What is going to be probability of B is equals to limit as n tends to infinity probability of so this way I just because I have a sequence which is monotone I could apply this continuity of probability and write it like this. Now let us take this set. Now let us look at all these points for time being which are going to satisfy this condition. Yeah, what is the doubt? Convince yourself later. Okay, he is not going to convince you. Okay. So let us say this I have a set of this omega which satisfies this condition. Okay, let us think of a particular omega in this case. Now according to the limit of this limit definition here, we know that x n omega minus x of omega is going to be greater than epsilon for some for all n greater than and equals to then n epsilon. This is true right, I have just applied the definition of the limit. If for some omega this is true, I know that that omega should also belong to this B. Is that true? Because I know that if this is the case, then for some B here, so for some B n this is already satisfied right and this is union. So that omega should belong there. So because of that, I know that my B contains this set. So my B contains this set. So B is contained here. Okay. Now let us apply probability on this B n and A n. If I am going to take probability of B n, this is going to be this I know trivially holds right probability has to be less than 1. And what I know, now let us try to invoke what is given to me. If I let this n, I want to now show that this sequence takes the value of n right. If I can somehow argue that my lower bound also goes to 1, then I as n goes to infinity, then I know that my probability as n goes to infinity is going to be 1. That is what I need to show. Okay. Now, if I am going to apply probability on this, I know that probability of B, because B is a larger set than this, it must be the case that probability of B is probability of omega limit n tends to infinity xn of omega 
right because this set is contained so sorry this left right hand side is contained in this it means me the case that this probability is less than this but by my hypothesis this quantity is going to be one because that is the definition of almost sure convergence now as i let n go to infinity so here uh, so here if that is the case i i know that the probability of b is lower bounded by 1 that means probability of b is 1 it has to be 1 so and if i now let n go to infinity here so this quantity by definition as n goes to infinity this is going to be simply p of b which i have shown to be equal to 1 so this is going to be probability of b less than or equals to limit as n tends to infinity probability of a n which is less than or equals to a1 and this i have already shown you less than or equals to 1 so that's why it must be the case that this sequence is equals to 1 so it implies that this quantity implies convergence in probability okay just also let's let let quickly discuss this part also this is going to be slightly easier now suppose we assume xn converges to x in the mean squared sense what does that mean i know that to zero now goes to zero right now what i want i want i want to say something about this because this is this quantity is related to convergence in probability right so how can i write this quantity in terms of this in terms of the expectation so do you recall any relations we studied so far the probability of a random variable being larger than something i could express in terms of the expect markov inequality right so if i apply markov inequality here what is this going to be and what is this upper bound is what did markov inequality say probability that this quantity is greater than epsilon is upper bounded by expected value of square of this divided by epsilon square epsilon is some constant but positive constant right however small it is and now just apply if i let n go to infinity by my assumption that xn is already convergence in mean square sense this quantity should go to what it should go to zero right however small your denominator is if this quantity is zero what is this quantity as n goes to infinity it's going to be zero and uh, that is exactly what we what is the definition of convergence in probability right so fine so let's leave it here like this c and d you can you can look into the book and you have to again go through construction of such sets do some epsilon delta business to get the proofs right so we will just leave it there you can just skim through the proofs but let's and let's make sure that we we understand these results for the rest so it is saying that convergence on p implies convergence on d and uh, we already talked about this